God to have given me this opportunity to just come and we share together his love with us. And I also want to thank God for our bishop and Pastor Alice for the call upon their lives and for, for allowing me to even be able to minister here. And the pastoral team, I'm so grateful. May the Lord bless you and increase you in every way. I also want to thank God for our media team. They do a great work to just help us go through the services, and I'm grateful to God. So I'm happy to be here today and just to say God is good. Amen? Uh, today I just want us to share something on... You know, we have been redigging the well since the year started. And when you look at, uh, I believe you have, uh, some of you have read the book on uh, redigging the wells by our bishop. If you have not, Kamahutachaisoma, if you have not read, please buy it and read. You remember uh, Apostle Paul, when he was writing, I think to Timothy, he said, Go bring my coat and books. Ata kusema kitabu books. So as a Christian, yes, you read the Bible, but you have to read other books because God anoints people and uses them for us. Uh, when we look at one of the wells is a well of salvation. Redigging the well of salvation is a key component for us as Christians. And in that book, when you are reading, redigging the wells, one of the components of the wells of salvation is healing. Healing, healing. So our topic today is healing is yours. Healing is yours or healing is mine. For us to just capture what that really is in terms of salvation, we can look at Romans 10, 9 to 10. Romans 10, 9 to 10. Uh, and it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And the meaning of saved in that verse is deliverance, preservation, healing, health, and soundness. And then when we look at Romans, um, at Acts 14, 9, if we look at Acts 14, 9, oh, this man had Paul speaking, Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. When the word healed there is used, it means healed, made sound, made whole. So salvation includes healing. Salvation and healing uh, is just, is, is, if it's a coin, it's one side of the other coin. So. Both Greek words, when they are talking of salvation, they mean spiritual healing and physical healing. So healing is ours. Hmm? Acts 4.12 says, nor is there, any is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So health is our portion as Christians. As people who know the Lord, healing is ours. Amen? You know, sometimes we go through so much physical pain that sometimes we think it is normal. It is not normal. It is not normal for us as Christians. So I want to look at sickness is a curse. Sickness is a curse. And you have to accept that sickness is a curse before you actually pursue healing with a passion. In, um, if you look at Galatians 3, let's look at Galatians 3, 13 and 14 together. And we can read it together. Let's go. Christ, from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. 14. 14. That the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. 
When Galatians is talking uh, verses 3, uh, you know, 13 and 14, when it's talking of the blessings of Abraham and redemption from the curse, we get that from Deuteronomy 28. Verses 1 to 14 talks of the blessings. And then verses 20, uh, 15 to the end talks of curses. And among the curses, various diseases are mentioned. Diseases of the mind, diseases of the body, diseases of the soul. Different diseases are mentioned. There's nowhere disease is mentioned as a blessing in the word of God. But it is mentioned as a curse. And so it's important that as believers, we believe that um, sickness, is a curse. Now, when we believe that sickness is a curse, then we can really pursue healing because Christ Jesus redeemed us from the curse. Amen? And he's here to bless us. He's here to heal us because sickness is a bondage that certain uses. If you look, look at Acts 10, 38, it talks of Jesus healed all who were oppressed by Satan. So it just means sickness and disease, they come from the evil one. They come from the evil one. So we believe sickness is a curse. Do we believe that? Aye. Ebus mama, water, water, water. Najwa mini mwalimu. Lift up your hand. Say, I believe Sickness and, disease Sickness and disease is a curse, is a curse. And, Jesus and Jesus Christ redeemed me, redeemed me from, the from the curse of sickness and disease. And disease. Amen. Let's have, a, have our seats. Now, God really wants us well. And we can look at healing and the atonement. Healing is part of the plan of redemption. It's good for us to know that. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, is our healer. And uh, in the Old Testament, you see a lot of linkage between healing and atonement. In uh, Numbers 16, 46 to 50, Aaron made an atonement for the removal of the plague when the children of Israel had sinned. And when the plague was removed, the people were healed. So healing and atonement go together. Also in Numbers 21, 4 to 9, when um, it was told to make the brazen serpent, when it was made, when people looked at it, they received their healing. So healing in the Old Testament, there are so many scriptures, they link it, healing and atonement go together. In, in the New Testament, a few... Uh, okay, maybe I can also look at the great verse, the great uh, scripture in Isaiah 53, 1 to 5. I believe we all know it, but I think let's read that one, media team. Isaiah 53, 1 to 5. We shall read it together. Let's go. Who has believed our report? And whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected man, men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And he hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. For surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by, by his stripes we were healed. Amen. 
clearly tells us by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. And then in Matthew 8, 16 to 17, the Bible clearly tells us that Jesus healed all to confirm what was prophesied, that he took our sicknesses and diseases. If Jesus took them, we don't have to have them. If Jesus took them, then we don't have to have them. And it's, it's good for us to believe that because really sickness deprives you of fulfilling your destiny, your assignment. When there's sickness in a family, everybody is put away. You can't do anything. It's one of the key distractions that the enemy uses in the body of Christ, bringing sickness and disease. And today we are saying healing is ours. We are refusing sickness and disease of every kind. In 1 Corinthians 6.20, if we can project that, 1 Corinthians 6.20, 1 Corinthians 6.20, it just tells us uh, that uh, sickness does not bring glory to God. Let's read together. For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. You see, we have been bought at a price, the blood of Jesus Christ. And that price is so precious, isn't it? And so we need to glorify God in our body and in our spirit. Sin does not glorify God. True? And sickness does not glorify God. We have to believe that for us to know that Satan uses sickness. To, to derail us so that we don't see or enjoy what Jesus died to give us. God treats the forgiveness of sins and the healing of our bodies just with the same sacrifice. When he died on the cross, he took our sins and our diseases with the same, same sacrifice. When Adam fell, uh, in Genesis, his spirit died, his soul was burdened with sorrow, and the body was subject to sickness and disease. So we became sinners because of what Adam did. Sawa, sawa. And when Jesus died at the cross, he was wounded. You know, he was wounded in his spirit. When God left him, he felt rejection and he was wounded. He was bruised, his soul was bruised with sin that was put on him, and the chastisement of our peace was put on his body. So we got healed just because Jesus, uh, you know, took all that from us. He took our sicknesses and our diseases. So just as Adam, we didn't do anything to receive sin from or to fall from Adam, isn't it? So we don't do anything to receive healing because Jesus did it for us. We just believe. The way we believe for salvation. And why I'm talking about healing, because I know it is, and sometimes we are, we've been sick, so we feel kukua mugonjo. Ama kama unaka headache, you think unaka headache too. Anything small, at a headache, you refuse it in Jesus' name because Jesus took it. And I know Jesus is a healer. I stand here, I'm going to be 70 by the end of this year, and I can confess I'm in good health. I know Jesus is a healer. I have been healed, and I know he heals. I know there was a time in 2006 or something, 2006, I had fibroids. I had a few conditions, but one which was key was fibroids. And when I went to the doctor, he said, it's so serious. And actually it was. He said, hey, we have to have an operation by next week. And I didn't think about it, but I just told her, no, I'll not go for an operation. Jesus will heal me. So they gave me the appointment. I came. When I came to service, when they called the ministry team to pray, I came forward. So you know I'm a ministry team member. Nikakuja mbele. Tukakuja, I was standing next to Pastor Beatrice. 
So nikamtania nikamwambia pray for me. I don't want to go for operation. I want Jesus to heal me. Na tuka siji vile aliomba because I don't even remember. Tunajua saa nyingine wakikuombea una even you don't even remember vile you know. Sawa? Or you you always remember the details. I don't know at what point I got healed. I just realized that I was healed. I don't remember how and when. And it went completely. And I can tell you I'm in good health. Yes. I went to the doctor maybe three or four years ago. I was going to out to do some work outside in Kenya and they wanted to prove that I'm in good health. So I work at the university, so I went to a health unit for them to check me. So when they checked me, they asked me, you know people think when you are old, you should be on medication. <laughs> I told them I don't take any medication. At first, before I reached the doctor, the people looking for my file, they really struggled. They didn't know where it was because eventually they told me, we don't know where your file is. What we are getting is that the last time you were here was 2003. Nikawambia, that is my file. I have not been here again. I have not been sick. <laughs> you understand? So when I went to the doctor, can you release which medication are you on? I say, I'm not on any medication. Even blood pressure, I said, no. So he was shocked that I'm not on medication. You don't have to be medication. Jesus took it, took it all. Now, during Holy Communion, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 25, I'll just explain. When we are taking Holy Communion, we are remembering that Jesus, by taking the body, we are remembering that Jesus took our sicknesses and diseases. If he took them, we don't have to have them. Sinisawa. And when we are taking the cup, we are remembering he took our sins and we are forgiven. So he took our sins, we are forgiven, and he took our diseases, so we are? Ah. In 2 Peter 2.24, it says the same. Let's read 2 Peter 2.24. Second Peter, or First Peter 2.24, sorry. By the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. So we are the healed because of what Jesus did, not because of what we do. Not because, you don't get healed because you are worthy. At where would you attend a dhambi, so you are worthy. Let's read. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. We were healed by the Lord Jesus Christ. And 3 John 2 says, God desires that we walk in health. So healing is ours. We don't have to be worthy. We don't, it's not at Kwasababu, at Jatenda Dhambi, at Kwasababu you know, or you think, maybe I did this, that is why God has put a disease on me. That is not true. That is false. God healed us. And it's important for us to know that healing is free. And it is for everyone. Healing is free. And it is for everyone. When we know that healing is free and it is free for everyone, then we shall be bold enough to believe God for healing. I, I want us to look at James 5, 15 to 16. Midi, I don't think you have it, but just look. James 5, 15 to 16. Um, healing is for everyone. And the prayer of faith, this is James, and the prayer of faith will save the sick. So faith is key. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. 16, confess your trespasses to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. 
it avails much. So it is the prayer of faith. Hmm? A prayer of faith. The, the effective fervent prayer in another version it talks of the prayer of faith. So when we pray for the sick, we, we are proclaiming, we declare what Jesus did and, and, and just appropriate it in our lives that he is a healer. Faith for being saved comes from you hearing the word of God on salvation. And so also faith for healing comes from you hearing the word of God on healing. And you cannot just listen to it once in a service. It, you just have to make it um, go with it day by day. In the Great Commission, the Great Commission, we are told to preach the gospel and these signs will follow us. And among the signs is healing. So the Great Commission talks of healing. As we are preaching the gospel, healing should follow. And, and so we must accept, you know, just like God cannot force somebody to get saved. Is everybody, is everybody saved? Why? Because God can't force you to be saved. You have to accept that you are a sinner and accept God's promise for salvation. Uh, maybe let's look at John 1, 12 to 13. John 1, 12 to 13. It reads, But as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. So those who believe, those who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man. So it is those who believe, who believed on him, who get saved. For us who are saved, we have believed. And maybe even there are people here who are not saved. Because believe. God will not force salvation on you. You must believe. Mpaka uamini we mwenyewe. Similarly, the sick must accept God's promise of healing as true for them, for, them to, for us to receive healing. Mark 6, 5 to 6. Mark 6, 5 to 6. Let's read together. Now he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching and it goes on. Why Jesus did not heal was not because he could not heal. It's because how what hawaku amini. You know, sometimes you have to refuse your gonjwa kidogo. You have to refuse your gonjwa kidogo. a small headache, you refuse it in Jesus' name. It is not yours. It's not God's will for us to be sick. And uh, we just have, uh, we believe God, he tells us, ask and you receive. You know, we ask God for healing. We, say we believe him for healing and we receive our healing. I know sometimes because you have believed, you believe, you have believed. You continue believing because sickness does not belong to you. It's just like we are saved, yes, but uh, it's not that we don't sin, isn't it? But it's not, we are not sinners. We don't take it that we walk with sin in our lives, isn't it? So even for healing, we have to stand that we are the healed in Jesus' name. We are the healed. So how do we get healed? I'll just briefly go through a few things to just help us. And my prayer seriously is that God will touch us today. He will touch us and our families and our loved ones to walk in divine health. Number one is know God's will on the matter of healing. What does God say about healing? 
One thing is that Jesus healed all. Jesus, all the accounts of Jesus healing, there are many instances he healed. There are 17 instances in the Gospels where he healed all, and there are 31 instances where he healed one or two. So God's will on healing is that he healed all, and there's no record of a person who came to Jesus for healing and he was not healed. Hakuna. And so today we are coming to Jesus. We want his healing. We are receiving it because he has imagined al Mishali. It's like this. Most of us are parents or whatever. You go home, you have bought bread. Amo metengenezea mtoto chakula, umemwekea hapo akule, alafu anayangalia tu, na ananja. Sasa utafanya nini? Na yesi mutoto ni mutu mkubwa. Okay, let's say you are a husband. Your wife has cooked for you food. He has, she has put food there. Na wo na nja, no na yangalia tu. Sasa atakufanya? Atakuforce. Yani akuforce vila anaforce huyo mutoto wa six months. Eh? So, even for us, Jesus, God sent his word and healed them. In Psalms 105, 26, he sent his word and healed them. He's Jehovah Rapha, our healer. So we'll believe God for our healing because Jesus healed all. And healing is in the atonement. It is healing is the bread for the children. We are the children of our Father God because we have believed Jesus Christ. So my prayer is we are going to be healed today. Amen? And healing takes various forms. Some healings are immediate. Those are miracles. Miracles, you'll just get instant healing. But most healing is progressive. Most healing is progressive. You believe it and you continue believing it and the, you continue receiving your healing. Amen? So you don't like uh, believe that now because the symptoms are there, now you are sick. No, you believe that those symptoms are not your portion. They are going and you are the healed. You don't wait to believe for healing now when you are healed. You are still believing, you are knowing, seeing that you are healed. So we believe because we are in the process of getting healed. You don't believe for healing when you have no pain. I mean, Simenda. When it has gone, then you are already healed. So there's nothing you are believing for. So we believe because it is a process. And, we believe, and that's why we declare it every time that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. Whether you are feeling pain or not, it should just be part of your morning prayers, your daily prayers. By the stripes of Jesus. You don't wait to feel pain to start declaring the healing of your health. So knowing God's will on the matter is important, that God wants us well. Then two, speak to the symptoms and command them to leave. There are many instances they talk about that. Maybe the one we can look at is Matthew 17, 20. You say to the mountain, you say to the pain, you say to the discomfort, you command it to go because faith is voice activated. You don't just think it. You have to speak to the mountain. You have to speak to the pain. You have to command it to go. So Jesus said to them, oh, so Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible to you. So you have to say. And you don't say once. You have to be persistent. You have to speak to the pain. You have to command it to go. Also in Matthew 21, 19, when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, it withered. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. And said to it, let no fruit grow on you forever. Immediately, the fig tree withered away. So, it's important to speak to the situation. You cannot just, una uchungu no menyamaza tu, mungu ni ponye, apana, ambia yo uchungu, ie? 
in Jesus' name. Not in your name, in the name of Jesus who conquered sin and sickness on the cross. Proverbs 23, 7. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. What you think is very important. What you think. If you think that actually, huwezu kuishi kwa hii dunia bila kukua mgonjwa kidogo. Unajua watu wengine wanamini hivyo? At how can you not be, how can you not feel pain? How can you, know, you not be sick? Ata wengine wananiangalia wanashinda. All those years you have never been sick. Me, I'm not sick. I, I have people come to my house and they say, unapana doll. Nasema, uku hakuna dawa ya pain. Because I don't, I'm healthy and I thank God for it. Amen. So I know we can be healed because Jesus is healer. Now, what you think, you know we have been taught so many things that you can be a bit sick. No, just cancel that, but that's why you have to read the word and believe it and read, read other scriptures or other books on healing so that you are able to buy that. You buy that so that you think of healing as yours, not as something foreign. What you think, what you believe, if you believe mpaka uwe mgonjwa kidogo, surely you will not walk in divine health. Me, I don't believe that. Yo, magonjwa staki. So, it, it's important that uh, what you believe, think, and say about the health of your body, I mean, contributes. So, we can, I can just say in a nutshell that why everyone is not healed is because sometimes there are too many distractions and you are listening to too many things where healing is not part of it. So you just keep believing God on healing and you'll walk in health because that is what he desires for us. And just know nobody went to Jesus na kakataliwa kuponya. Situko hapa, na yesu wako hapa. You are going to be healed, your family members, and all that. I'll just go briefly through the hindrances to healing, because there are some. Um, lack of knowledge on healing. Very key. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. If healing is a challenge in your life, in your family, you just have to pick healing as a key a key topic for you to read, to listen to tapes on healing, to, you know, and now with technology, you can just listen, you can download material on healing, and just see that actually God heals. So lack of knowledge is key. Now, our Christo, sometimes we are very lazy in reading. At least I know you have Bible. Vitabu vingine sioni. But you have the Bible. Read the Bible. Uh, the other thing, you know you can get that. Lack of knowledge on healing. Eh? We should not perish for lack of no knowledge. Then John 8, 31 to 32. John 8, 31 to 32. We, then Jesus said to those who believed him, if you abide in my word. Those who believe, we will believe him. So he says, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We have to abide in the word. And know the truth, and that truth will set us free. Amen? Um, so lack of knowledge, I think those are enough. Then two is a lack of faith for healing. Lack of faith for healing. And in this one, I'll talk of, uh, maybe I'll just give individual, yes, but more so church, congregation. If all of us here, sahi, tunamini in healing, healing just flows. It is not an individual, individual, yes, but it's not so much an individual 
healing. It's a community, it's a congregation healing. You, we have to have faith as a congregation for healing. Let's look at Mark 16, 17 to 18. And these signs will follow those who believe. You remember the Great Commission, it is those who believe. Those, those, how jasema, him or her. Simulmenda shule nyinyi, munajua singular na whatever. Those, not her or him who believes. Tunelewa, it is those, in my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they lay hands next, they will take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not by means hurt them, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They, those, it is not talking of one person. When we have community belief as a church, healing flows very fast. That's why when you have healing crusades, healing whatever, people just get healed. Ata hawajamini na wanapona, ata hawajaokoka, ata hawajafikiria sana kuponywa, lakini wanapona tu. Because it is those. That's why we pray for it as a congregation. Maybe Acts 1.8. But you shall receive power and the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be with my witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You see, it was talking to all the disciples, not just one. Then uh, we can look at Acts 4, 29 to 31. Acts, Acts 4, 4, 29. Now, Lord, look on their threats. This was Paul and Peter speaking. Uh, now, look at their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they will speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. It was not to individual. Look at your servants. So us as a congregation, we believe God for healing and we will continue to see his healing in our lives. And maybe just a follow-up of that, we can look at Mark 6, 5. No, that one we have read. Let's read Matthew 13, 58. It just shows that Jesus healed few where there was community and belief. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their and believe, not because of her or his and believe. So my brothers and sisters, waja tuamini tu. Bishop wana tuamianga tushikilie ye imani yake. Waja tushikilie tu because we grow from faith to faith. Eh? We grow to levels. Let's just believe God as a church, as a congregation, as Shiloh, and miracles and signs and wonders will be just something of a daily occurrence. Then another reason which hinders us from um, receiving healing is traditions of men. The traditions of men make the work of the word of God of no effect. So we said, Nenolake, you know, we have sung that the word of God is, is true, it comes to pass. But some traditions of men make the word of God of no effect. You can look at Mark 7, 8, and 13, and I'll just go first very fast through some of those traditions. What people normally think is that God is the author of sickness and disease. But God is not the author. Everywhere it shows us God is not the author of sickness and disease. Jesus healed all Acts 10, 38. So, you know, when you, if you believe God is the author of disease, akutakuwa mugonjwa. Utabaki mukonjwa because first of all, if you believe God is the author of disease, then don't pray because you are praying against God's will. Sikama mungu anataka kuwa mugonjwa, we baki tu mugonjwa. Sasa kiwomba su naomba against his will. Ama, am I making sense? 
God is not the author of sickness and disease. If you believe this is coming from God, and ataka kunifunza kitu, ama nilikuwa nimefanya kitu, God just healed us, not because we had done anything, because he loves us, because of compassion. He healed the multitudes because of compassion, not because we are good, not because we are perfect, not because tunaomba sana, not because he, no, he just, it's because of his love and compassion. So don't think God at, or, or you have done things, maybe you have been an alcoholic, umekunywa pombe sana, mpaka sasa mwili yake na mashida, he will still heal you, just believe him for healing. But it doesn't mean you continue doing those things. Eh? Sawa, sawa. God will heal you, but if you believe it is his desire for you to be sick, then you will not be healed. And we have to stand and minister healing because people are suffering. The devil is bringing havoc in people's lives, in families, and we reject it. Another thing is that uh, sickness glorifies God. There's no way it says sickness glorifies God. You can look at Matthew 15, 29 and 31. It is healing which glorifies God. You can just write maybe those if you want to read. And some also say the age of miracles has passed. But you know the Holy Spirit gives us power to be witnesses of Christ. And healing is part of what he has told us to do. Uh, yeah, it's not God's will for you to be sick. And some say Jesus healed because he was the son of God. I, I think we read, let's read John 14, 12. Let's read John 14, 12. Yeah, because some people say, we alikuwa mungu, yes, we alikuwa mungu ndi aliponya. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than this he will do, because I go to the Father. You and me are supposed to do greater works. Yeah, aliponya, na sisi mpaka tuponye saidi kushinda yeye. Sawa, sawa. Then one, which is very common, um, even when most of the others we have read, it may not be applying to us as individuals or as a church, but this one, this number five, it applies to most of us. Breaking natural laws. Breaking natural laws. Most Christians, sometimes we are sick because of breaking natural laws. And the world of God, this world is governed by laws. They are natural laws. So when we disobey them, imagine tutakuwa wagonjwa. And some of the key ones is if you neglect laws on food and diet, on eating, healthy eating, imagine utakuwa mugonjwa. I'm telling you the truth. Food and diet, very key. It is so key that when we break it, our body breaks down. Then also rest and exercise. Sangine watu, you are busy, 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 busy. No, God meant you be busy, usiku inatakikana ula, ulale. Kama unafanya kasi usiku ulale mucha. You need to sleep the normal hours, around eight, nine. Just to sleep. Your body will be very strong. Usukwe na mashuguli, there are enough human beings to do the things you are doing. Delegate. Don't be that you are the only one who can do things. No. So, rest and relaxation. Because you hear a lot of people with stress, depression, whatever. Most of those things are related to lack of rest and relaxation. Yeah? Uh, and some exercise, recreation. When Guinea, you are too busy, you preach so much, you have no time even to exercise. Sasa sutakuwa mgonjwa. Yeah, exercise even as you, as you do the various things. You know, some of these, they cause, you know, the body, you know, the body is um, a natural, you know, it's, it will break down if we ignore some of those things. Because God gave, uh, health. He said he's Jehovah Rapha who heals, but he also gave laws regarding how to maintain your health. I just want to say we can believe God for healing. 
And we can believe God for healing now. You don't have to wait at uta chetani atasema utaenda usome kidogo ndio jue vizuri vile kuamini. It's not true. Just believe God. Jesus died for you. He redeemed you and uh, he will help us believe him for healing. So that you are able to receive your healing, it is our portion. Jesus when this lady went to him, the man he said, "Have compassion. Eh? Help me." God wants to heal us. He really wants to help us to receive our healing, but we have to believe him for it. It is a gift. We don't earn it. And uh, we can reach out for that. We can believe God for healing of our family members, of our friends, of people in our congregation. Because there's no space and time in God's timing in terms of of, of healing. So we can believe God that he can heal us. He can heal our family members. He can, we can walk in that healing because Jesus Christ died and gave it to us. And if there's anything standing in the way of our healing, he can remove it from us. And some of the ways that uh, stand in our way, you know, there are many things but some of the key things that stand in our way, in our way for healing is uh, like unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is offense. And, and I think this one is more common for Christians. You know, we take offense, we are not able to state it, unforgiveness, to not smile, lakini. So if there's offense, it's very difficult for God to move in terms of healing. So offense to a channel nayo, and if it is there, we just tell God, God forgive us. Just as I talk, you can remember, think and tell God in your own words to forgive you. Then another sin, of course, we have talked of sin. Sin will cause, you know, God not to move in your life. Uh, you know, we all sin, but when we sin, we just repent and God forgives us. And especially sins which are connected with the body. Now, if you are involved in fornication, adultery, nato nakuja kwa church, una sponsor, sijui mahali, una sijui mwenye na kulipia. You know, there are many things. Na Christians wanakuwa kakanisa na wanafanya hizo vitu. Unajua when you are sinning with your body, aki sasa hizo madimons unaleta kutoka kwa wale watu wote. Sasa sumpako utakuwa mgonjwa. You know, so just don't sin. Sexual sins attract a lot of sickness and disease. You know, all sins, but really sexual sins are, are more easy to attract many of the diseases. But not all, of, not all sickness is due to sin, okay? Because it's the enemy who attacks. We said Satan is the one who brings sickness and diseases, isn't it? It's the oppression of the evil one. So we believe God and we ask him to forgive us if where, if where there is sin or where there are things that may not be adding up or unbelief. You know, unbelief is sin. Uh, and for most of us, generally it is unbelief. Or we just believe the doctors when asemanga this is terminal, ata wana amini yoni terminal. Sawa, sawa. Ama hi haiponangi. You have to, now if you believe that, how will God heal you? So we have to believe God, that God will set us free. He has already set us free. We shall believe him for our healing. He does it to bring glory to his name. When we are healed, it brings glory to God. Amen? When we are healed, it brings glory to God. So we'll, we'll just... Uh, pray. I'll just ask us to stand. Let's stand. And if you have uh, any healing, any healing desire for yourself, for your family, just, just uh, tell God he's ready to heal you and set you free because he loves us and he wants us well. And we just dedicate ourselves that we shall go continually before the Lord that we walk in his healing in his health, 
he has provided for us. So let's just go before the Lord and, and uh, tell him to minister him.